Hello everyone, my name is Daniel, and in this video, I will present details about IROC's paper, Deep Imitation Learning of Sequential Fabric Smoothing from an Algorithmic Supervisor. Robot fabric manipulation had many applications, such as folding towels and laundry, ironing clothes, assistive dressing, flattening slightly wrinkled fabrics, cutting gauze in robot-assisted surgery, and robotic bed making. In recent years, there has been increased focus on using learning-based methods for fabric manipulation. For example, one can use simulators and deep reinforcement learning augmented with demonstration for folding and similar tasks. Other techniques avoid the use of demonstration by either training a video prediction model or designing a more efficient action space for learning. In this work, we focus on the problem of flattening fabric from highly rumpled initial configuration, such as those that you see here. One reason why this task is useful is because smoothing can standardize the position of the fabric and often makes it easier to perform downstream tasks, such as folding. In these images, we show examples of different studying fabric configuration taken from a top-down camera view that we use later in our experiment. From these images, we want a robot to perform a series of actions to get the fabric to cover the white background plane. We designed our own custom fabric simulator, but alternatives exist, such as those from Blender, PyBullet, Mujoko, ArcSim, and NVIDIA Flex. Both PyBullet and Mujoko support fabric simulation, but neither provide a support for environment interaction or have sufficiently accurate physics for smoothing until concurrent work. Blender can simulate fabric physics, but we found that it does not properly support multiple sequences of action. Higher fidelity simulators such as ArcSim prove too slow for generating massive data sets, and the simulator from NVIDIA Flex does not expose an easy-to-use API for Fabric. Our open-source custom simulator supports Fabric physics and robot action. The Fabric is modeled as a 25 by 25 grid of vertices, which represents the underlying state. We render top-down images to get observation. The fabric lies on top of a white background plane, and the goal is to take a series of action to maximize coverage. The episode ends when an agent triggers the coverage threshold, or when it takes the maximum of 10 actions allowed, or if it pulls the fabric too far off the plane. Since the performance of fabric simulation depends heavily on the starting configuration of the fabric, we attempt to formally design three difficulty tiers of fabric starting state, based on initial coverage and the number of fabric corners visible. Tier 1 fabrics will have high initial coverage and all four fabric corners visible. Tier 2 fabrics will have medium initial coverage and usually one fabric corner slightly hidden. Tier 3 fabrics will have low initial coverage and at least one fabric corner well hidden. We implemented fabric smoothing as a sequence of pick and place action parameterized by a 2D pick point and then a pull vector. We assume top down graphs without rotation. To actually train the policy, we use deep imitation learning with Dagger, which is short for dataset aggregation. This method assumes a supervisor can be queried efficiently online to provide corrective labels for an agent when it takes action in the environment. While this is often considered a downside for Dagger, it is fine in our setup because we use a corner pulling supervisor, which can be implemented in a straightforward fashion by using the underlying state of the fabric, and it is easy and fast to query. An example episode of the supervisor is shown below, where we show the color and depth images at each time step. The fabric starts at 38.4% coverage, 
and after five pick and pull, it reached 95.5% coverage. Here's an example of our simulation environment with the supervisor policy, also referred to as an Oracle policy because it has access to the ground truth state information. In this tier one setup, the fabric is slightly wrinkled and one of the four corners is far from a target on the underlying plane. The Oracle policy picks at that corner, does a short vertical pull upward, then pulls in the direction of the corner of the underlying plane, and then releases the fabric, which attains sufficient coverage to trigger the end of the episode. In this next episode, we show an example of our Oracle policy on a harder starting fabric state where the fabric corner, especially the one to the lower right, may be hidden underneath layers of fabric. Here, the Oracle policy must perform multiple actions to progressively smooth the fabric. It determines the corner to pull by measuring the distance between the fabric corner and the corner of the underlying plane for all four corners and using the one with the largest distance. After four actions, it attains sufficient coverage to end the episode. We benchmark a number of baseline methods in simulation, all of which are programmed algorithmically and do not use machine learning. We test with a random policy. We test with picking the highest point of the fabric or the vertex with the highest Z coordinate because that proved to be a reasonably strong baseline from prior work. Next, we apply a stronger baseline, which uses classical computer vision techniques, to measure the wrinkles in the fabric, and then pull in the direction perpendicular to the largest wrinkle. Finally, we use two Oracle policy, Oracle and Oracle Expose. The Oracle policy was shown in the prior video and is a corner pulling policy that pulls at the fabric corner furthest from its target. The Oracle Expose policy adds extra functionality to reveal a fabric corner by pulling an above layer in the opposite direction of the target plane corner. However, in our experiment, we found that this policy did not attain significantly better performance than the Oracle policy. Both Oracle policies attain the best coverage across all tiers and require the fewest number of actions. Since the Oracle policy is a simpler policy, we use it as a supervisor for the learn policy. Next, we benchmark the performance of our learn policy in simulation. We train our policy using three input modalities, color images alone, depth images alone, or combined RGBD or color and depth images. We additionally train tier-specific policy so that policies are trained only on tier 1, tier 2, or tier 3 starting configuration. Therefore, this results in 9 total trained policies. The training is split into two phases, a behavior cloning phase on held out data from the supervisor, consisting of 2,000 episodes, and then a dagger phase where the agent takes steps into the environment and receives corrective label. We run the dagger phase for 50,000 cumulative agent depth, and at various checkpoints of training, we take the snapshot and roll them out for 50 test time episodes. The results suggest that RGBD, and then RGB train policy, attain the best coverage performance in simulation, and that the performance almost matches that of the Oracle policy, represented as the horizontal dashed black line in the plot. For physical experiment, we run on from a Da Vinci surgical robot shown here, in part because approaches for fabric smoothing could potentially transfer to manipulation of skin and suturing, hernia mesh surgery, and other procedures. We only need one arm, and we will explore by manual manipulation policy in future work. In order to transfer learned policy to the real world without any fine-tuning on real data, we apply heavy domain randomization on the simulated dataset during training. We domain randomize both the color and the depth images. 
Here are examples of domain randomized color images where we vary the fabric color, the shading of the background plane, and the camera orientation. We apply a similar domain randomization process for the depth images. When domain randomized in a specific state, at some time depth during training, we first randomize the camera orientation and then use that same orientation for both the color and depth images to make them match. We show experiments on all three difficulty tiers of starting state configuration. As with simulated training, we use the same nine train policy, which contain all combination of the three image input modality and the three difficulty tier of initial fabric configuration. We run a total of 20 test time episodes for each policy, resulting in 180 episodes represented in the table above. The table shows the starting fabric coverage, the final fabric coverage, along with the maximum coverage obtained at any point during training and the number of actions in an episode. The results suggest that the policy train on RGBD images outperformed the other policies on the harder starting configuration with respect to final coverage. And we hypothesize that depth is useful in those cases because the fabric is more likely to have depth variation and layers on top of each other. Now let's show some examples. In this video, we take a policy train on domain randomized color and depth images shown on a tier 2 starting state example. For each time step, we will record the fabric coverage and overlay the color and depth image input. The initial fabric coverage over the white background is 56.9%. The first action correctly pulled at the corner of the fabric furthest from the target. Notice that the fabric corner of the first few actions are slightly hidden underneath the above fabric layer. Nevertheless, after a sufficient amount of action, the robot is able to get sufficiently high coverage. In this next episode, we show an example of the robot manipulating fabric from a harder tier 3 style starting fabric configuration. The starting coverage here is just 45.6%. Fortunately, once again, after a sequence of pick and pull, the learn policy can smooth the fabric so that it reaches the coverage success threshold. Here is an example of a failure case. In this case, the policy was trained on only depth images and erroneously picked at the center of the fabric and pulled it, thus decreasing coverage. We are actively exploring ways to address this and similar failure cases in ongoing follow-up work. To recap, the contributions of this work were a novel formulation of fabric smoothing as a sequence of pick and pull action a simulation environment for data generation and evaluation of fabric smoothing with three difficulty tiers of initial state complexity in terms of coverage and visible corners, deep imitation learning of fabric smoothing policy which transfer the physical experiment on a DaVinci surgical robot. For concurrent and future work, we are actively pursuing model-based and descriptor-based approaches for fabric manipulation. More broadly, we wish to develop policies that can perform a variety of fabric manipulation tasks without requiring scripted task-specific supervisors. Finally, we will apply these approaches to more complex fabric manipulation tasks such as complex wrapping and packaging fabric. For more information, please check out our paper and the project website. The project website will contain links to additional videos, the training data that we use, and documented open source code. And we hope that you are interested in using our fabric simulator. Thank you for watching.